Oh, no, thank you. Yes. No, thank you. No, come here. Are you detaining me, sir? Yes, I am. Stop. For what crime? Stop. What is your reasonable, Turn articulable? Around. Do not touch Turn me, around. sir. Turn around. For what have I done? I'm detaining you. Turn around. For what suspicion? What is your reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime? So one day as you're taking a walk, you're just going for a scroll and then you're stopped by the police chief and then several other police officers. And they're asking for your information, but you have no clue of why this is happening. So you politely refuse. This is exactly what we're about to witness. Welcome back to We The People University. My name is Abaya Israel, former police officer, former sheriff's deputy. The Kent Police Department located in New York is going to be the subject of our spotlight today. We're gonna to look at a video where several police officers, they have a clear description of a suspect, but yet somehow they get another man who has absolutely nothing to do with the situation. I received this video via email by a viewer. He asked me to go to the channel Ryan Theodore and watch the video. And when I did, I had to share it. Make sure you show your support to this channel by subscribing. Instead of me talking, let me show you. Let's jump into this video. Camp Police Department. Hey, what's going on? Um, I live over at uh, 17 Livingston Road. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I just saw somebody ring my doorbell. Um, I, I, you know, I usually have no problem with people like soliciting around, but dude was like looking up and down my house. He stood there for a little while. He was writing stuff down, and then I saw him on the Google camera going to my driveway, and it looked like he was looking at my truck. Um, I don't know if you want to just send somebody over there to see what this guy's doing over there. He's not on my, at my property anymore, but. I can describe him to you. Sure. What's it? Do you can you tell me what direction he was going in? Yeah, he went down Livingston towards um, towards Putnam Drive. That's the last I saw him. Okay. I'm, Are you I'm, at home I'm now? NY, I'm, no, no, no. I'm at work. I'm, I'm NYPD. Okay. So, and your NYPD. name, your first and last name, sir? Sure. It's Stephen with a PH. Mm-hmm. Last name Santoro. S A N T O R O. And you're at 17 Livingston Road, and you saw this person on your on your ring doorbell. Um, can you describe him to me? Yeah, he's wearing like gray pants. It looks like a uh, tan, like Carhartt type hoodie. It's a uh, nail white. Nail white. Okay. All right. Um, gray pants, tan hoodie, nail white. Uh, okay. And about how long ago did this happen? Uh, about five minutes ago. Five minutes in the past. Okay, so, and he yes. was ju just looking at, looking at the house, and um, then he left and is now headed down Livingston towards Putnam. Yeah, it just struck me as strange. Like usually people ring and then they just go away, but yeah. stood there for a little while, and then he wrote some, something down, and then I saw him go into my driveway, and it looked like he was looking at my truck, and then yeah. I, I couldn't see him anymore. So. Yeah, we do have people in the area. Um, it's called uh, home remodeling, and you know they're trying to sell you windows and doors, et cetera. But you know, uh, I'll yeah, send somebody I, up. I know them. I yeah. know them, but his his city wasn't marked or anything. Just oh, okay, no there. markings. Okay, I'll let yeah. the officer know. We'll get somebody up there see if we can locate him. So two things about that 911 call. Now, it could have been an accident. Initially, the cop states that, hey, he's been in my driveway for a couple hours. I don't know if you guys caught that. You might want to rewind it. Um, but later, he states that it was about five minutes. But again, simple mistake. But, you know, those simple mistakes will cost the average citizen. Right. So um, and the other thing, he really made it known felt the need to say, hey, I am NYPD, New York Police Department. So one thing that you might know if you or might not know about smaller police departments, because the Kent Police Department that we're about to watch is a lot smaller than the New York Police Department. Um, smaller departments tend to kiss the butts of the bigger departments. They're looked at as the big brother, the big department that I want to work for. This is this. Uh, I don't know, this thing that smaller departments, you know, you want to get to the bigger department. A lot of cops will start off with smaller departments so they can grow to the bigger departments. So watching this video, and I'm sure that's going to have an influence on the way that these cops react to this gentleman in this video, because they're out there for their big brother. So their reaction is going to probably be overboard. So let's check it out.
Uh, no, thank you. Yes. No, thank you. No, come in. Are you detaining me, sir? Yes, I am. Stop. For what crime? Stop. What is your reasonable, Turn articulate? Around. Do not touch Turn me, around. sir. Turn around. For what have I done? I'm detaining you. Turn around. For what suspicion? What is your reasonable, articulable suspicion of a crime? Yeah, multiple calls about you. What is your RAF? Right. Yes. So somewhere along the lines, um, we are taught that detainment, detainment automatically means going into handcuffs. There's no reason for me to put you in handcuffs because you're being detained. I don't see weapons. You're not trying to attack me or attack anyone else. Why am I throwing handcuffs around your wrist that's going to bruise or possibly injure your wrist? Simply because I need to investigate, that's the crazy part. This is unbelievable. What is your RAS? <laughs> it's funny? My freedom is yeah. funny to you? Yeah, no, it is. It's hilarious. I just asked you to. Wow. I'm not required to do that. Yeah, yes, you, you are, are when criminality is afoot, and we do have a what complaint is your matching your description. This is the police chief, by the way, who just laughed in the face of a citizen who asked him the question is my freedom funny to you and he responds yes yes it is involves suspicion we, we don't have to give all that to you what We're is your probable your cause i have plenty of it you do i do i've never seen you before well good nice to meet you this is unbelievable yeah it is this right? is happening in america yes it i is. just saw that you shouldn't be looking through people's windows we shot a man in their home at the wrong address and then this is the follow-up in this country Let's talk for a second. No, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. I want to be released right. and free. Go, oh, this is unbelievable. We'll bring him down for... Just stand with this officer for a second. We're going to talk. I don't want to. Okay, well, that's what's going to happen. We're just going to talk for a second. This, this, is, this is insane. This is insane. There it is. Is anybody available to film this? No, you're being filmed right now. No, I want a private. Are you seriously? Yeah, what is your reasonable seat. suspicion? Have a seat. This is incredible that this is happening in America. Yep. I'm a free man. I've done no wrong. Now, right here, you guys may say, oh, he just took the water bottle out of his pocket. Technically, illegal search. You can't pull anything out of his pockets. You only can, at, at the most, if you have um, enough probable cause or reasonable articulable suspicion, you can pat for weapons. You cannot take anything out of his pocket. Um, now, if you had that uh, suspicion, reasonable articulable suspicion, RES, that this guy was in, in, involved in criminal activity. He had a weapon, he could be dangerous. At that point, if you thought the bottle of water was a weapon, then you could remove it. But it's clearly a bottle of water. And he removed that. These are like small things while you might, oh, well, Abaya, that's pretty petty. Well, think about all the petty tricks that law enforcement will pull on you and get you into a courtroom and will prosecute you. So therefore you have to match that level of energy. Show them that you're not going to allow them to violate your rights, no matter how small. Well, now you're detained. That's fine. What were you doing in people's yards, looking in their windows? What are you talking about? I you have exactly evidence of this? Absolutely. Where, uh, may I see it? Yeah, multiple I want an attorney present for any questioning. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. That's your right. Yeah. He so right here, they mute their mics and um this happens all the time sometimes you know they completely just turn off the body cam but right here they're talking with their mics are muted right and so we only can guess what they're talking about they're trying to get things together trying to figure out if this is a guy but if you remember at the beginning of the video there was a description there's a picture on the screen the clothing did not match these are two different people these are uh two completely different individuals the first guy did did not have a mustache. He did not have a gray hoodie. He had a brown hoodie. Nothing in search Nothing. Just the can you just roll down the window? Yeah. I gotta go from the other side. Yeah. Alright man, we're trying to figure out what's going on, okay? Uh, listen, I, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm going to tell you, explain to you. What, you don't have to talk to me. I'm just going to explain to you why you're in the back of a car right now. Okay. We got a call from a bunch, several people saying that there's somebody entering properties, knocking on doors, poking in windows, uh, poking in windows, and they match. You match their description, so that's why you're you're where you are. 
first off, he did not match the description. Was it wasn't even close? Okay, <laughs> wasn't even close. Secondly, how often do you see detectives come out for a simple nine one one call? How often do you see the chief of police show up for a simple nine one one call? This goes back to what I was telling you earlier. Smaller departments will cater to the bigger departments as if they're the big brother because they like to suck up to the bigger departments. So. Whoever the NYPD officer was that called the police, he stated that he was NYPD for a reason. He has top level, top notch response, as we see. Yeah, ring doorbell camera. Oh, okay. So that's like that's what. It, that's fine, and we will, and we're confirming that you're only being detained yeah. right now. Okay, you're not under arrest. What do you mean I'm not under arrest? You're not under arrest. We're just trying detained. to explain to you what's going on. What you say. Yeah, you're not yeah, charged with the crime, but you're not. You're not under no, arrest. You don't know what the word arrest means. Okay, well you're being arrest detained right subdued. now. Okay. Detainment would mean the whole. Okay, but I'm not here to this argue with you. Can we just explain this? You can do whatever you want. Just... And one more thing, you hear this guy stating that. You hear the cop state that. Well, you're not under arrest. You're only being detained. But if you look up the definition for arrest, and this is what the gentleman is trying to tell them, there's multiple definitions for the word arrest, and one means to stop. For example, if you state in the medical terminology, cardiac arrest, what happens? Your heart is stopped. So therefore, they call it cardiac of the heart arrest. It stopped. This is what he's trying to explain. You seize me. You stop me, which is also a definition for arrest, and this is the debate back and forth. But most police officers never take this into consideration. I'm just trying to tell you what's going on, man. Okay, you're not being charged with a crime. Exactly, but I am still under arrest. You put me in handcuffs. And if you that's your definition of it right now, at this point we're just talking. We're explaining you our circumstances. Oh, you've done more than talk, sir. Okay, very fine. I don't care what you say. I'm just explaining to you what's going on right now. We're confirming if you match the description of that person right now. Okay. If you don't, and you there's nothing wrong, you're going to be released. Okay. I wasn't here for that. I'm just telling you what we're here you to do. You cannot do this to somebody. You have to have the evidence first Sir. before you can detain somebody. I didn't put handcuffs on you, did I? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Somebody did. Of course. And now you're being detained. And that's no, it. No, I'm under arrest. Okay. I haven't All right. We, 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 we try to, to tell you what's going on, okay? We just want to let you know what's going on. All right. But you didn't tell me why my okay. license is violated. And the mic goes off again. Here's where they're going to figure out, hey, this is not the guy. Oh, wow. That's the picture. Well, the, there's no mustache. Oh, wow. The, the upper garments, the sweaters are different. The pants may possibly be different. Hey, one may be taller than the other. So now they're figuring this thing out that we have the wrong guy in the back seat of our vehicle. But as the gentleman in the back seat of the vehicle stated, you should have figured this out before you put me in the back seat. You don't just pull up, get out of the car, tell me to put my hands behind my back and have this giant overreaction. Why? Because uh, an NYPD police officer called. Would this response be the same? Would you see the chief of police or any other detectives if anyone else in that neighborhood had called and said, hey, there's somebody ringing my doorbell and they wrote some information down? No, the chief of police is not coming out for that. Detectives are not coming out for that unless it's proven to be a very, very serious crime. And even then, the chief still doesn't come out. Not in most departments. But NYPD calls, so they all appear. Their mics are still muted. What do you say to you guys when you were talking? Yeah, basically just the... Uh... You know, if you can't arrest me, then you're like, that's just being difficult. Before you ask him if he knows this guy. Yeah. All right, man. Here's the deal. Well, there's no deal. I don't have any agreements to make with you. No, no, no. It's fine. We're looking for a guy. Cause there's another guy going around. That looks like me. Sweatshirt. Well, you we have to find sweatshirt. that out beforehand. Before you can, you don't have reasonable articulable suspicion. Well, you we broke the law. No, you are the criminal no, in this instance. No, yeah. So we had two yes, separate you are. incidents. You are, are you with anyone Under color else of law, here? I do not answer questions. Okay. I already said I want an attorney present for any questioning. Okay, we're not. You are again you. violating my rights. Again, at this point, when you see the police officer um, ask him, "Hey, do you know this guy?" That's their point of justification. Please don't be fooled by that. They're trying to show you, "Hey, well, we really had a suspect." So, do you know this guy? Because they're trying to take a little bit of heat off of themselves, so they can show that, "Hey." It was in good intention. Um, I thought you were the guy. But in this particular case, they look absolutely, they're, they're not even close. 
they're not even close. I don't understand how he is mistaken for the gentleman or the guy in the picture. Um, but as the man in the back seat just stated, you are the only criminals right here. You're the only one that did something illegal. You are the only people standing here right now that actually committed an illegal act. What do you mean? You just asked me a question. Okay, help on out, buddy. Is that an order? No, I'm just going to want to search my car off now. Here's your water. The phone's sitting on the hood of my car right there. You can grab it. Could you back up? I don't want to... No, I don't want anything to happen here. No, you're good. We're not going to hurt you. Yeah, you do. I do? You seem like you do. I wanted something to happen. Yeah, you seem like you do. You're funny, right? You're funny. All right, Steve, you got everything? Yeah, we're... I'm not done here. What is your name and badge number, sir? That's right here. What is... That's what you tell the judge? What is your name? Can you articulate it? Can you articulate it, please? Can you articulate it? Chief Owens from the Town of Kemp Police Chief Owens. Okay? My officers all have what? their names right on What is your thing. badge number? Articulate it, please. It says right there. Articulate, articulate it, please. Good, articulate it, please. I'm not articulating it. What have is your badge day. number, sir? One. Number wow, one. Wow, you have disdain for the public? No, I have disdain What is for your you name and badge number, sir? Okay. No, I don't have disdain for the public. I have disdain for you because you are inappropriate. Yeah, I know I just illegally stopped you, violated all of your rights and put handcuffs on you, threw you in the back seat of a car, you're completely innocent, you're simply just going for a walk, and I violate your rights. So, yeah, it's you. You're the problem. That's what's really going on here. So I have this thing for you, not the public. I and mean, by the way, they don't have to articulate. It's on their shirt. You can see their name. You can see their badge numbers. Well, these last two officers, um, let's see. Are they going to identify? Thank you very, sir, for your professionalism. Yeah, at least sir. they did that. Can I get your name and badge number, sir? Jason F. Detective 35. Thank you very much. Ready? Yeah. Look what they did to my wrist. Wow. And then from that point, they all just get into their cars and leave. No apology. Hey, sir, we're sorry. We thought you were someone else. Although we know they, it's humanly impossible to think that those are the same people. I have no clue how they could have mixed up such a description and arrest or slash detain the wrong person the way they did. And the arresting or detaining cop, when asked for his badge number or his name, he goes, it's right here. And then the chief comes up and states, yeah, it's right on their shirt. He confirms or supports the behavior of his police officers. So good luck with filing and a complaint on this one. But if we, the people put pressure on this department and let them know that we are watching and we're not going to settle for this anymore, then things may change. Hopefully there's a lawsuit, there's a follow-up, there's something that comes behind this. I'll keep my eyes open for it, but don't let these guys violate your rights. And if they do, you fight them back the way that we're supposed to. With that being said, We The People University, signing off. Thank you for joining We The People University. If you have a video you would like us to share, please click the link in the video description. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe so that you may be notified when we publish future videos. Also, don't forget to download Cancel Tyranny version 2 and learn your basic rights when there is no time to Google. Available now on Apple and Android. And if you ever wondered about what really happens behind the scenes within the police department, check out my other channel titled Cop Tales 236 to hear all of my stories about my time and experience while working as a cop. We look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you for your support.